Amsum was brushing his hair one morning when he noticed huh? a few strands stuck huh? to the brush. Another one fell onto his shoulder, and soon a few more followed. Surprised, he wondered, why do we shed hair? Determined to find out, Amsum shrank and entered his own body. He landed on the scalp, a vast landscape covered with tiny openings called huh? hair follicles. Each follicle was like a small tunnel holding one strand of hair. Deep inside the follicle were living cells that constantly divided and pushed older ones upward. Those older cells hardened and formed the visible part of the hair. In one follicle, Aum Sum saw cells multiplying quickly, pushing the hair out longer and thicker. This was the growth phase. Huh? A little farther away, he found another follicle huh? where the cells had slowed down. The hair there wasn't growing anymore. It was resting. That was the transition phase. Then, huh? Aum Sum spotted a hair that was barely hanging on. In that follicle, the cells had stopped dividing completely. Slowly, the old hair loosened and drifted away, leaving the follicle empty. That was the shedding phase. Aum Sum realized that shedding was a natural process. Every day, a few hairs completed their life cycle and made space for new ones. Leaping back outside, Aum Sum smiled proudly. <laughs> Aum Sum was enjoying a huge scoop of ice cream on a hot summer day. It was cold, creamy, Ooh. and perfect, until suddenly he froze. A sharp pain shot through his head, right behind his eyes. He grabbed his forehead and winced. Amsam wondered, why do we get a brain freeze? Determined to find out, Amsam shrank and entered his own body. He landed inside the mouth, where the cold ice cream was still melting. The chill was spreading quickly across the roof of his mouth, an area called the palate. Tiny blood vessels lined its surface. The cold air and ice caused the vessels to shrink suddenly, reducing the blood flow. But as soon as the cold began to fade, the vessels widened again, this time huh? too quickly. The sudden expansion caused a burst of pressure that traveled through the nerves. These nerves didn't just stop at the mouth. They connected directly to the head, especially to the trigeminal nerve one of the main pathways that carries facial sensations to the brain. When the cold signal reached the brain, uh -huh. it got confused. The brain couldn't tell whether the pain was coming from the mouth or the head, so it interpreted it as pain inside the forehead. That was the sudden stabbing pain known as a brain freeze. <laughs> Leaping back outside, Om Sum smiled proudly. Aumsum was lying on the grass one afternoon, gazing at the sky. <laughs> it stretched endlessly above him, painted in the brightest blue. He tilted his head and wondered, why does the sky appear blue? His curiosity sparked, and with a blink, Aumsum soared upward, racing through the air. He rose higher and higher until he found himself inside the atmosphere surrounded by swirling particles of air and gas. Sunlight streamed in, dazzling and white. As he floated among the particles, beams of sunlight broke apart around him. Red, orange, yellow, green and blue light scattered in different directions. But then, Aum Sum noticed something special. Huh? The blue light rays were bouncing more wildly than all the others. Tiny air particles pushed them this way and that, scattering them across the sky. That's when he realized the truth. Huh? Sunlight looked white, but it was actually made up of many colors. Red, orange, yellow, green, and blue. Red light had long, stretched out waves, while blue light had short, tiny waves. The tiny particles in the air were better at bouncing the short waves in every direction. So when sunlight entered the atmosphere, the red and yellow waves mostly passed straight through. 
but the blue waves scattered wildly. That was why the whole sky looked blue.